will recall that uh, the reactor that famously melted down back in 1986 was in Ukraine. And uh, it's, Chernobyl is not the only one. There are other nuclear reactors in Ukraine, in fact, 15 of them. Kevin Camps is on the line with us, our old friend. He's the radioactive waste specialist with Beyond Nuclear. Beyondnuclear.org is the website. Beyond Nuclear is also the Twitter handle. Um, Kevin, welcome back to the program. What is the situation with regard to um, radiation, radioactive waste, and this conflict in Ukraine? It's a very concerning situation. Uh, there was a fierce firefight at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant several days ago between Ukrainian National Guard and Russian military. The Russian military took the site relatively quickly and is in control of it. The heavy armor, the tanks, the armored vehicles, the troop movements kicked up radioactive dust in the Chernobyl dead zone with readings close to one millirem per hour, which if a person were to be in that kind of environment for a year, they would get close to a nine rem dose. And that's just external readings. If you were to breathe in, inhale or drink in or eat in such heavy contamination, it would be even worse. So that's some of what's going on at Chernobyl. It's not just the contamination, there's high level radioactive waste stored there from the four reactors that operated there. There's the melted down core in the destroyed unit four. There's all kinds of radiological hazard at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in the surrounding region. In addition to Chernobyl, uh, two low level radioactive waste uh, storage sites, one near Kiev and one near Kharkiv have been hit by what appears to be inadvertent Russian military explosives. There's no evidence that it was intentional, but if you know, indiscriminate fire is hitting low level radioactive waste storage facilities. That begs the question, what's the difference? Yeah. Um, so you mentioned there are 15 operational reactors in Ukraine. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, nine are actually operating, which is just insane to be operating atomic reactors in a open warfare situation because a stray missile or shell let alone intentional, God forbid intentional, um, but just uh, inadvertent explosions at nuclear power plants could uh, start the dominoes to falling. And in addition to all that, with nuclear power in Ukraine, uh, Putin, a couple days ago, uh, increased the military readiness of the Russian nuclear weapons arsenal, something that has not taken place with the Russian Federation since the year 1991, when it was formed. Wow. Whoa. So uh, my understanding, Kevin, is that uh, Ukraine is actually one of the larger sources of uranium for the world, for nuclear power. Um, has, it, it, are, are you familiar with Ukraine's power systems? I mean, are they moving to green their power? Or have they, I mean, the, the, all these reactors, I'm assuming, are left over from the Soviet Union? Unfortunately, I mean, despite the best efforts of the Ukrainian anti-nuclear and environmental movements to go green in Ukraine, the government has stuck with its Soviet-era nuclear power system. So Ukraine is one of the most nuclearized electric grids in the world. It's only surpassed by France and Slovakia. So close to 50 percent of Ukrainian electricity comes from nuclear power plants. And yes, of course, at any time, especially in a war time, you need electricity for the civilian population. And how unfortunate and tragic and scandalous it is that 50% of the electricity in Ukraine is nuclear powered, which just increases the risks dramatically. I mean, it's, it's just insane to operate atomic reactors in an area beset by open warfare. Like but even if said, they're not operating, I mean, they're, they're, they're equally dangerous if they're hit, are they not? Um, yes, I mean, one of the big risks is the high level radioactive waste storage, even at Chernobyl, which, um, you know, the last reactor to operate at Chernobyl shut down in the year 2000, but you have all the high level radioactive waste, some of which may still be in indoor wet storage pools, which are especially vulnerable, mm -hmm. but even the dry cask storage at Chernobyl due to Arriva of France, 
a faulty design and faulty construction taken over by Holtec International. Both of these companies, Arriva, now called Orano, and Holtec are active in the United States when it comes to high level radioactive waste management. They have so screwed up the dry cast storage at Chernobyl that it is flawed to begin with. And then God forbid it get hit by an errant shell or missile, which could ignite the high level radioactive waste. And uh, then it's an exothermic reaction releasing high level radioactive waste into the environment. Those are- e Exothermic reaction is a fancy way of saying an explosion, right? It's a fire that feeds itself. I mean, right. the zirconium metal cladding on the fuel rods is um, ignitable. And once it ignites, good luck trying to put it out. It will feed itself in terms of it's fuel. It's like magnesium. That's, yeah, like zirconium burns very hot. In fact, it's in cluster bombs. It's an ingredient in cluster bombs, which the Russian military is apparently dropping cluster munitions on Kharkiv right. residential areas as we speak. Yeah, it's mind boggling. I, I, I have a question unrelated to this that I'd been meaning to ask or wanting to ask somebody who might be in a position to know and I didn't know of anybody and it occurs to me, it just occurred to me that you may know the answer to this. Um, Germany used to be heavily dependent upon nuclear power and uh, over the last couple of decades, they have uh, moved away from nuclear power and, and, and increased radically their use of, of uh, uh, solar power and wind power, but also you know, are heavily dependent upon oil and gas, particularly natural gas, the Nord Stream pipeline uh, and, the, and the pipeline through Ukraine uh, on Russia. If this thing goes south, and I mean, you know, 40% uh, of Germany's energy right now is coming from Russia. If this whole thing goes south and Russia cuts them off or they cut Russia off, do they have the ability over the short term on an emergency basis to reactivate any of those nuclear power plants so that the country doesn't brown out? So the German Greens have been anti-nuclear since their founding in the mid 1970s. It took living under the Chernobyl cloud in 1986 to get the Social Democrats there. And it took Fukushima to get the conservatives there, but it's a political consensus in Germany to be anti-nuclear. There's only three reactors left operating in the country and there is the possibility of keeping them operating past their current shutdown date by the end of this year, which would be the end of nuclear power in Germany if they do shut down. So they could extend. I think they're very leery to because, like I said, a very hard won anti nuclear political consensus in that country. Mm -hmm. And these reactors themselves are very old. I think the take home lesson is the faster that we transition as a world society to renewables like wind and solar and maximized efficiency, the better. We need to go carbon free and nuclear free as quickly as we possibly can to save the climate, but also to save ourselves from radiological catastrophes. Yeah, I totally get it. But uh, I, essentially, my question was, there are still nuclear power plants in Germany that are not right now producing electricity. Were they de decommissioned in a way that they cannot be brought back online? Or have they been essentially paused? Did they just drop the fuel rods in or the, car the carbon rods in to, you know, to, to stop the reactions? Or have they started disassembling those? I think to the best of my knowledge, the only reactors that could continue operating after 2022 in Germany are the three that are still operating. Mm -hmm. It would be very difficult to bring any of the other 20 back that have been shut down, some for many years at this point. Yeah, I get it. Okay, Kevin Camps, beyondnuclear.org is the website. It's also the Twitter handle. Kevin, thanks a lot for dropping by. It's great talking with you. You too, Tom. Thank yeah. you. And, and amen. No nukes, go green. We'll be back. There's a new scheme to trick voters into switching parties down in Florida. It has been exposed. I'll tell you about that on the other side of the break. Also, it's being reported now that uh, Putin has sent 400 mercenaries out of Africa into Kiev to assassinate Zelensky.